care of patient on enteral feeding. Objectives Upon completion of this educational activity, participants will be able to Differentiate types of tube feeding Demonstrate proper tube feeding Demonstrate proper wound dressing techniques Describe the adverse effect of tube feeding Identify when to stop tube feeding Target audience Nurses Practical nurses Caregiver Topics content What is enteral feeding and its indication? Types of tube feeding Administration of feeding and residual checking Tube feeding complications When to stop enteral feeding Peg care Wound assessment Adverse effect Education format Lecture and exam evaluation Online module and self-assessment Introduction What is enteral feeding? Antoral tube feeding is a means of administering all or part of a person's nutritional needs when they are no longer able to take adequate amounts orally. An antoral feeding tube is a tube that is specially designed to give you nutrition, food, and fluid in a liquid form. Antoral feeding tubes may be recommended to provide all of your nutritional needs, requirements. Types of tube feeding. Antoral feeding tubes come in many different types, lengths, and sizes, and exit in a variety of places in the GI tract. Antoral feeding tubes can be inserted via a number of routes, via the nasopharynx, for example, nasogastric, NG, or nasogenal, NJ, or via direct access to the GI tract through the skin, for example, gastrostomy or jejunostomy tubes. These ostomy tubes can be placed surgically, radiologically or endoscopically. Nasogastric NG, tube The NG feeding tube is inserted via the nose and exits in the stomach. Tubes used via this route in adults can vary from fine bore tubes, for example French 6 to French 12, designed specifically for feeding to the Riles type tubes, usually French 12 to French 16, used for aspiration. In some patients, particularly those in intensive care, a large bore tube may already be in situ when feeding is commenced. In this instance, the tube can be used to commence the feed but should be replaced by a fine bore tube when tolerance to enteral feeding is established. In adults, these tubes are usually 90 to 100 cm long. Types of Tube Feeding Nasoduodenal Tube and DT. The nasoduodenal feeding tube is inserted in the same manner as the NG tube but is allowed to pass into the duodenum, usually with assistance, either endoscopic or radiological. This is used to overcome the problems associated with gastric stasis. It is also referred to as postpleuric. Types of tube feeding Nasogenal, NJ, tube NJ tubes are usually inserted endoscopically or radiologically to ensure that they are in the correct position in the jejunum. If being used to minimize pancreatic stimulation, the tube is passed beyond the hepatic flexure, ligament of triads. These tubes are prone to blockage owing to their length, usually more than 150 cm, and should only be used for drug administration in exceptional circumstances because of the lack of evidence relating to drug adsorption from this site. There are also tubes that have a gastric aspiration port in addition to the jejunal feeding port. This allows for continuous jejunal feeding while the stomach is decompressed. Types of tube feeding Percutaneous gastrostomy tubes are inserted into the stomach via the abdominal wall, most commonly endoscopically, percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, bag. A permanent tract, stoma, forms after three weeks. The device is held in place with an internal balloon or bumper and an external fixator. Types of tube feeding Percutaneous jejunostomy The percutaneous jejunostomy tube is inserted into the jejunum via the abdominal wall, endoscopically, percutaneous endoscopic jejunostomy, BEG, radiologically or surgically. They are held in place either externally with stitches or internally with a flange or dacron cuff.
types of tube feeding. Percutaneous gastrojejunostomy. The percutaneous gastrojejunostomy tube is inserted into the stomach via the abdominal wall and the exit of the feeding tube is placed into the jejunum, most commonly endoscopically, percutaneous endoscopic gastrojejunostomy, BEG. This can be done as the primary procedure, or a tube can be placed into the jejunum via an existing PEG tube. Feeding Administration Position Lying prone, supine during feeding increases the risk of aspiration and therefore where clinically possible it should be placed in an upright position. If unable to sit up for a bolus feed or if receiving continuous feeding, the head of the bed should be elevated 30-45 degrees during feeding and for at least 30 minutes on and after the feeding to reduce the risk of aspiration. Feeding Administration Continuous Feeding Defined as feeding for 24 hours continuously either by gravity drip or feeding pumps. Continuous feeding at low volume is often used as the first step to commencing a patient on an enteral feeding regimen. It is the preferred method of use if the patient has rapid intestinal transit and may be more suitable for critically ill patients than other regimens. Feeding Administration Advantages of Continuous Feeding Allows the lowest possible hourly feed rate to meet nutrient requirements. Better gastrointestinal tolerance due to the lower feed rate. Better control of blood glucose levels due to continuous carbohydrate input. Feeding Administration Disadvantages of Continuous Feeding Physical attachment to the feeding apparatus may affect the quality of life. An expense of equipment, pump and giving sets. Cyclic, intermittent feeding. Enteral nutrition is stopped for a 4-16 hour period either during the day or at night. The shorter the period of feeding, the higher the rate may need to be in order to meet the patient's requirements, suitable for pump and gravity drip. Advantages of cyclic, intermittent feeding. Allows greater patient mobility, may improve quality of life. Allows breaks for physical activity for the administration of medications that are incompatible with feeds, and to encourage oral intake if applicable. Useful in the transition from continuous to bolus feeding, or from tube feeding to oral intake. Advantages of cyclic, intermittent feeding. Daytime feeds may reduce aspiration risk if it is difficult to maintain a 30 degrees elevation overnight. Feeding during daytime only is more physiological and may, therefore, have benefits such as helping to re-establish the diurnal cycle, promoting normal gastrointestinal motility and promoting re-acidification of the stomach, which protects against bacteria. There is no evidence for a benefit of gut rest. Advantages of cyclic, intermittent feeding. However, compared with continuous feeding, a higher infusion rate is required to provide the same volume of feed. This may be less well tolerated, with a higher risk of problems such as reflux, aspiration, abdominal distension, diarrhea and nausea. Feeding Regimen Bolus Feeding Defined as rapid administration of a bolus feed slash water by syringe, usually by gravity, without the plunger, speed of delivery is controlled by holding the syringe higher or lower. Bolus feeding is usually into the stomach which has the reservoir capacity to tolerate a large volume of feed. A prescribed volume of feed is given, such as 100 to 400 milliliters, over 15-60 minutes at regular intervals. Feeding Regimen Advantages of bolus feeding Physiologically similar to a typical eating pattern Allows greater patient mobility Convenient for gastrostomy feeding can be used to supplement oral intake. Can be flexible to suit the patient's lifestyle and improve quality of life. May facilitate transition to oral intake. Avoids the use of expensive equipment. Feeding regimen. Disadvantages of bolus feeding. Large boluses may be poorly tolerated, especially in small bowel feeding requires more nursing time compared with pump controlled feeding highest risk of aspiration reflux, abdominal distension, diarrhea and nausea.
when to stop antoral feeding. You need to stop antoral feeding if experienced of a low list. Bowel obstruction. Bowel perforation. Paralytic ileus. When to stop antoral feeding. Bowel perforation. A perforated bowel happens when a medical condition, such as diverticulitis, causes a hole or tear in your bowel. An injury or blockage may also perforate your bowel. Bowel contents can leak into your abdomen through the hole. This may cause a life-threatening infection. When to stop antoral feeding. Paralytic ileus. Obstruction of the intestine due to paralysis of the intestinal muscles. The paralysis does not need to be complete to cause ileus, but the intestinal muscles must be so inactive that it prevents the passage of food and leads to a functional blockage of the intestine. Checking residuals. Using a 60 ml syringe, withdraw from the gastric feeding tube any residual formula that may remain in the stomach. The volume of this formula is noted. And if it is greater than the predetermined amount the stomach is not emptying properly and the next feeding dose is withheld. This process can indicate gastroparesis and intolerance to the advancement to a higher volume of formula. Tube feeding complications. Problem. Nausea, vomiting, and bloating. Possible cause and intervention. Large residuals, withhold or decrease feedings. Medication. Review meds and consult physician. Rapid infusion rate, decrease rate. Diarrhea. Possible cause and intervention. Too rapid administration, reduce rate. Refrigerator TF, too cold. Tube feeding, decrease rate. Constipation. Possible cause and intervention. Too rapid administration, reduce rate. Refrigerated TF, too cold. Administer at room temp. Tube migration into duodenum, retract tube to reposition in the stomach and reconfirm placement. Tube feeding complications. Problem. Aspiration and gastric reflux. Possible cause and intervention. Improper tube placement, verify placement. Delayed gastric emptying, check residuals. Position of patient. Keep hob elevated 30-45 degrees angle. Occluded tube. Possible cause and intervention. Inadequate flushing, flush more routinely. Use of crushed meds, switch to liquid meds. Tube feeding, decrease rate. Displaced tube. Possible cause and intervention. Improperly secured tube, retape tube. Confused patient, follow hospital protocol. Pig care. Preparation. Inform the patient about the procedure. Prepare the supplies needed in peg care. Do hand washing or disinfect hands with sanitizer. Do double gloving. Removed soil dressing. Check for signs of infection. Do wound assessment. Clean the site using gauze wet in NSS. Peg care. Application. Removed gloves. Get cotton tip applicator. Applied antibiotic if required. Applied 4x4 gauze. Secured with micropore tape. Wound care procedure. Cleaning a wound. Remove the soil dressing. Roll or lift an edge of the dressing and then gently remove it while supporting the surrounding skin. When possible, remove the dressing in the direction of hair growth. Inspect the dressing and wound. Note the color, amount, and odor of drainage and necrotic debris. Wound care procedure. Irrigating a wound. Prepare the solution and equipment. Fill the irrigating device with irrigating solution. Irrigate the entire wound thoroughly. Gently instill a slow, steady stream of solution into the wound. Make sure the solution flows from the clean area to the dirty area of the wound to prevent contamination of clean tissue. To prevent tissue damage, don't force the needle or angiocatheter into the wound. Wound Care Procedure Irrigate until you've administered the prescribed amount of solution or until the solution returns clear. 
Note the amount of solution administered. Keep the patient position devices used to allow complete wound drainage. Clean and dry the skin. Use normal saline solution on the puri wound skin, and then pat it dry with gauze. Pack or dress the wound applied antibiotic cream as ordered. Adverse Effect Unblocking Tubes Blocking of tubes can occur due to The interaction between gastric acid, formula, and medications. Interactions between medications if the tube is not flushed between medications. Inappropriately prepared medications for example inadequately crushed tablets. Small internal diameter of the tubes and longer tubes. Binding of medication to the tube. The viscosity of some liquid preparation. Tablet form medications that are suitable for crushing. Poor flushing technique. Bacterial colonization of the nasogastric tube. Adverse effect. Flushing is the single most effective action that prolongs the life of nasogastric tubes. It is recommended that flushing occur before, during and after administration of enteral medications and feeds. To unblock enteral tubes, flush the tube in a pulsating manner, push, pull, with 10 to 20 milliliters with warm water. Please note there is no evidence to support the practice of using carbonated drinks such as coca colatum to unblock enteral tubes. Adverse Effect Feed Intolerance Nurses should monitor and observe the patient to assess if the patient is tolerating enteral feeds. Signs that the patient is not tolerating feeds include Nurses should consider titrating feeds down or ceasing feeds for a short period of time depending on the clinical status and nutritional needs of the child. Adverse Effect Tubes Falling Out Nasal gastric tube dislodgement or accidental removal consider ongoing nutritional needs and clinical status of the child and in consultation with senior nursing staff, medical team and or dietitian to decide if tube should be replaced. Nasogenal tube dislodgement or accidental removal, consider ongoing nutritional needs and clinical status of the child and in consultation with senior nursing staff, medical team and or dietitian to decide if tube should be replaced. Adverse effect. Tubes falling out. Dislodgement of a gastrostomy tube, stop the feet, medication administration immediately. Contact the medical team and or gastroenterology clinical nurse consultant to review. Keep the tube in place by taping it to the skin until a plan for reinsertion can be made. Accidental removal of a gastrostomy tube, tube needs to be reinserted as soon as possible to prevent stoma closure. Gastrostomy tubes should be reinserted and taped into position if the balloon has burst. If the tube cannot be reinserted consider using a Foley catheter to keep stoma patent until an appropriate tube can be inserted. References Handbook of Drug Administration via Entoral Feeding Tubes 3rd Edition, Rebecca White and Vic Marnotes Nurses Clinical Pocket Guide 2nd Edition, Aaron Myers